Okay. Okay, so this is um, another video to practice the graphs of sine and cosine. And this time I'm going to do some examples including phase shifts. <clears throat> so in the last video I did some with vertical shifts and period changes and even a reflection over the x-axis, but I didn't do any with a um, phase shift. So let's look at, let's start with 3 sine of 2x minus um, 2x minus, let's do 3 pi, and then minus 4. So I have a lot of stuff going on with this. And again, you're most likely going to be asked for the amplitude, find the period. I ask my students for the distance between key points to make it easier to find those key points, those x-coordinates of those key points. Um, you're probably going to be asked for the phase shift if there is one. You'll be asked for a vertical shift if there is one and whether or not there is a reflection okay, over the x-axis. So we're going to start with the amplitude and of course like I said before the amplitude is always dependent on the coefficient of the function. In this case it is a 3 and the amplitude is always the positive version of that. The period is always 2 pi I don't know why I did three lines there. <laughs> the period is always 2 pi divided by, we say b, 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x, and in this case, 2. 2 pi divided by 2, which is pi. So that means that one full revolution occurs in pi radians. I always tell my students, find the distance between the key points to make your life a little bit easier when you're finding the x-coordinates of your key points because you're going to be asked for them and it always is the period divided by four. You're always taking whatever the period is and cutting it into four pieces. Always into four pieces. How do I know if there's a phase shift? I know if there's a phase shift if I have something subtracted or added to this x term inside the parentheses and in this case I definitely do. I have a minus 3 pi. And a phase shift is the same thing as a horizontal shift. And we always do the opposite of the sign. So see that it's negative 3 pi? Always take the opposite of that. So my phase shift is going to be positive 3 pi divided by the coefficient of x, which in this case is 2. My phase shift is 3 pi over 2, always the opposite of this divided by the coefficient of x. Positive 3 pi divided by 2. That means we're moving to the right 3 pi over 2 radians from where we started or from, you know, when x is 0, like the original function, um, the original graph of the function of sine looks like. Do I have a vertical shift? I determine that by whether or not there is a number being added sub or subtracted after the function outside of the parentheses. So in this case, I'm subtracting 4, so I have a vertical shift down four units and for the vertical shift we follow the sign so if it's a minus we go down if it's a plus we go up do i have a reflection there is none and how do i know because there is no negative in front of the coefficient in front of the trigonometric function so my amplitude is three my period is two pi divided by two or in this case pi my distance between key points i take my period and divide by four my phase shift is the opposite of this term so in this case a positive three pi divided by the coefficient of x divided by two vertical shift down four units and no reflection because no negative in the front Okay, so I have all my information now. I'm going to go ahead and set up my key points. So I usually write it out like this first for my students. Okay, and again, some of you will get used to going straight to the graph. But your teacher, your professor is always going to want you to actually identify the key points um, of the main cycle either on the graph or written in table form like this. So I'm going to do the same thing again without the vertical shift. Then I'll do it with the vertical shift just to make it a little bit easier. Now to help me with my key points, I have to determine what kind of function it is. It's a sine, right? So a sine wave looks like the snake. It goes from the center, which I call the intercept, to a maximum, the high, back to an intercept, down to a minimum, and then back to an intercept. So I'm going to write that down in my first column here. So since it's sine, I'm going to start at an intercept. I'm going to go up to a maximum, back to an intercept, down to a minimum, back to an intercept to create that snake-like curve. 
Now, if I had a reflection, then what, what I would do is I would change all my maxes to mins and all my mins to maxes because then that would just flip it. This one does not have a uh, reflection, right? No reflection, so I don't have to do that. So now I'm going to go straight to my x coordinates <clears throat> of my points. So we're going to have points for every one of these key points, five of them. Okay, now. Due to the fact that there is a phase shift, remember before I said if there is no phase shift, I start at zero. My first x coordinate is zero. But this one has a phase shift to the right 3 pi over 2 radians. So this is my first x coordinate when I have a phase shift. So my first x coordinate is the phase shift, which in this case is a 3 pi over 2 radians. Now, how do I get to the next x coordinate? This is why I tell my students to find this distance between key points because this is the number that I'm adding to every single x um, coordinate to get to the next one. So I'm adding 1 pi over 4. 1 pi over 4. So I'm going to write it out for this one. I'm going to take that 3 pi over 2 and add a 1 pi over 4. Let me ignore the pi's for a second. This is a 6 fourths plus 1 fourth, which is a 7 fourths. And then I'll just stick a pi next to it, 7 pi over 4. Now hopefully I could start doing this in my head. 7 fourths plus 1 fourth is 8 fourths or 2 pi. 8 fourths plus 1 fourth is 9 fourths. 9 pi over 4. 9 fourths plus 1 fourth is 10 fourths. Always simplify or 5 halves or 5 pi over 2. Now <clears throat> I always tell my students do a quick check. Take the last x coordinate, 5 pi over 2, and subtract the first x coordinate, 3 pi over 2. See what you get. Does this value, when I take my last x coordinate and then subtract my first x coordinate, do I get what I stated the period was? The period is pi. That difference is pi. That's what I want. Okay, because one cycle from start to finish should occur in pi radians. That's a quick check to make sure that you did this part accurately. Now I'm going to think about my y coordinates without the vertical shift first. So without the vertical shift, all my intercepts, of course, occur on the x-axis. So all the y coordinates are zero without the vertical shift. To determine the maximum and minimum, I'm going to look at the amplitude, three. So the maximum is going to up, going to go up to positive three. The minimum is down to negative three. Now again, that's without the vertical shift, and now I have to look at it with the vertical shift. Let me get this out of my way, create some space. Okay, if you want to go ahead, go ahead. Now, does a vertical shift affect my x-coordinates? No, a vertical shift moves the function up or down. So all the x-coordinates are done, they're the same. I'm not going to rewrite them. Now what was the vertical shift? Let's go back and check it out. We said that the vertical shift was down for units. So my vertical shift is going to go down for units. Now remember that we said if I'm going down four units, how is that affecting my y coordinate? Well, if I'm going down four, I don't know why I keep writing. It's like I switched from cursive to print. If I'm going down four units, <laughs> sorry guys, <laughs> then I'm going to subtract four to each of my y coordinates. So zero minus four is negative four. 3 minus 4, negative 1. 0 minus 4, negative 4. Negative 3 minus 4, negative 7. 0 minus 4, negative 4. Now I have all of my ordered pairs for my main cycle. Okay, so let's set up our graph. We'll come back to this page in a second. Let's get a nice, clean, large graph. Now I probably Let's actually change this. I'm going to make my um, negative part of my y um, axis a little bit more because if you recall, I go down to negative 7. I go a little bit further over this way. Okay, so I'm setting it up, keeping in mind what I had for my key points. Okay, x, y, label everything for your teachers. I'm sure they're going to want that, your professors, whoever it is. I'm going to count by ones on the y-axis, typically, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, right? <clears throat> what I'll do really quick is refer back to my vertical shift down 4, 
since it's down four units, I'm going to draw this horizontal line over here at negative four. This is going to be the new center of my curve. <clears throat> now, how do I determine how I count along my x-axis? This is where, again, I say refer back to the distance between key points. We're going to, we're going to count by pi over four along the x-axis. So let's see. One pi over four, or one fourth pi over four, two fourths pi over two, three fourths three pi over four, four fourths pi, five fourths five pi over four, six fourths three pi over two, seven fourths seven pi over four, eight fourths two pi, nine fourths nine pi over four, ten fourths five pi over two, and then over here is just the negative version of all of those, boom, 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 it's just gonna go to the left, okay? The negative version of everything that I just determined. <clears throat> negative pi over four, okay. Now, um, I mean, <clears throat> let's go back to our points and think about it, my phase shift is to the right, three pi over two, so I know I'm gonna start there. My first point is at three pi over two, negative four, right, an intercept. Three pi over two in this case is over here. Three pi over two, negative four on that new horizontal axis, right? Then it should go up to a maximum and it should be a distance of three units from here. So one, two, three, I'm expecting it to be at seven pi over four, negative one. Let's see if I'm correct. Let's go back to my points. Seven pi over four, negative one. Makes sense. My next point, should occur at the next um, tick, two pi, should go back to an intercept back here. So I'm expecting it to be two pi, negative four. Let's refer back to our points and see if I'm correct. Two pi, negative four. So I can go straight to the graph if I want to, if you recall, <clears throat> like I said before. Let me extend this so we can see, okay. My next um, ordered pair should occur at the next tick, nine pi over four. This was an intercept, should go down to a min. The amplitude was three, so it should go down three units from that new horizontal line. So in this case, nine pi over four down to negative seven. Let's see if I'm correct. Nine pi over four, negative seven. The next tick should come back to the intercept, which is on the horizontal line. In this case, five pi over two, negative four, let's see if I'm correct. Go back to my points, five pi over two, negative four. So this is what I mean by you get used to um, graphing enough of these, you can kind of jump to the curve without doing the table, but as long as you write the points on the curve, um, the key points on the curve of your main cycle, okay? <clears throat> Everybody's gonna want that. All teachers, all professors want that. I ask my students for that. And then we ask for at least two full cycles. And more than likely, I'm probably gonna go to the left to make it easier because otherwise I'd have to extend this to the right and I have no more space. So I'm gonna extend this to the left into another full cycle and I'll make that one green. So I'm gonna keep going up and down, right? So here at three pi over two, I was on an intercept, gotta go back down. So five pi over four, down three, because the amplitude is three back to the intercept at the next, up to a maximum, back to an intercept. Here's another full cycle. All right, let's keep going. Back down, one, two, three, down to a min, back to an intercept, don't forget that y-axis here, back up to a maximum, but the next one, back to an intercept. I could just keep going, this is very, <laughs> a little bit off with that connection there. However, figure not drawn to scale, figure not perfect, right? When nobody's perfect. Boom. Now I actually have one, two, three full cycles represented, but this is the main one where if you don't have this table to show your key points, you need to verify, you need to show them actually on the graph. Okay, let me know if you guys need another example with a phase shift. I could do a cosine um, function, but this one is, let's do, this one is just sine, and the next video will be cosine. So this had an amplitude change, it had a period change, it had a phase shift, it had a vertical shift. Okay, and this is the graph of my sine wave in this case. 